Today on the OT, we break down LSU basketball and their upcoming tournament game, and not to mention the latest out of the Mad Hatter's mouth. All this and more coming your way. Welcome to the OT, a segment of Tiger TV Sports Showtime. I'm Taylor Halsey, and for the next 15 minutes, we will take an in-depth look into the lives of your favorite Tigers and pros. But for a quick break from the sports world, as first reported by Tiger TV Presidential Ticket Unite, LSU led by John Woodard and Taylor Parks, is disqualified from the student government presidential race. Election Commissioner Aimee Simon announced the election board found a discrepancy on expense reports as the ticket allegedly exceeded the limit on campaign financing. Impact LSU, led by T. Graham Howell and Caitlin Torque, was declared the winner pending an appeal with U Court. Stay tuned to TigerTV.tv for the latest on this story as we keep you updated. But leading things off, the LSU football team looks to begin their spring practices tomorrow, and head coach Les Miles took the podium today to preview the upcoming practice schedule, saying his staff will use this time to evolve their talent. Some other notes from the presser, Miles said injured senior running back Alfred Blue will finally be ready to go for the upcoming practices, and Lael Collins is currently the team's first option for less left tackle. Stay tuned to Tiger TV throughout the following weeks for all your spring football updates. Moving right along, both as a player in the 80s and as an assistant coach under Dale Brown, Johnny Jones has seen his fair share of success for LSU. Now returning back to Baton Rouge as head coach, Jones hopes to create a legacy of his own. Last Saturday marked the end of the men's basketball regular season, as well as head coach Johnny Jones' first full season with the program. Jones, a former player for LSU, spent the last 11 seasons as head coach at North Texas before returning to his alma mater. Transitioning from North Texas back to LSU has provided numerous changes that haven't been limited to just the new coach. Returning players have faced changes as well, and forward Johnny O'Brien III says that they have been for the better. You know, it's been great, you know, my, my first year under Coach Jones, you know, he's done a great job. You know, he's, um, he's exceeded a lot of people's expectations for this first year. Um, the, guy, the guys are really, you know, taking a liking to him. He's really uh, been a great coach for us. Among other things, Jones has brought a different style of play and attitude to the program, something that guard Anthony Hickey says he's very grateful for. Him just teaching me is a blessing. Um, him pushing this team and taking this program a long way, him believing in us, is making our confidence go up so high. With four more total wins and a better SEC record than last year, most are quick to give the new coach credit for LSU's improvement. But head coach Johnny Jones would be the first to tell you otherwise, as he gives more of a modest approach when it comes to the team's changing reputation. Well, I just have to really uh, credit our young men on our basketball team and in the program. Uh, I think it says a lot about them. I really just set the tone where we needed to be academically, uh, where we're going to be in the community, uh, the impact in those areas that we're going to have to make to make sure that we put ourselves in position. Jones and his team have yet another chance to exceed expectations as the SEC tournament quickly approaches. Depending on their performance, LSU could potentially make a postseason tournament for the second year in a row. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Morgan Beard. Jones and the Tigers attempt to rebound from the season finale loss to Ole Miss as they face Georgia in the first round of the SEC tournament on Thursday. Tip-off is set for noon. But the LSU baseball team closes the out-of-conference portion of their schedule tonight before kicking off SEC play this weekend. Entering tonight's contest against Nichols State, the, the Tigers currently sit in the top five of the majority of national polls and are 15-1 on the year. Getting his first collegiate start tonight is freshman pitcher Russell Reynolds, and first pitch is set for 6.30 at Alex Box Stadium. Whatever sporting event you may go to on LSU's campus, there's always a common denominator of one fan who's always bringing his Tiger spirit. Reporter John, Lum John Williams brings us the man behind the wig. I was born three months premature. I have a disability known as cerebral palsy. LSU! 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 It's a muscle deficiency. Some, some of my muscles don't work as well as they should. During Matthew Clark's first year at LSU, he did not receive any football tickets. At that point, Matthew decided he would go to every other LSU sporting event. Let's go, Tigers! Pretty much as long as I can remember, every single match we have, he's always been there with his 
her phone yellow wig on, cheering for us. Matthew has had to pace himself his entire life because he cannot stand or walk for long periods of time. I was worried, you know, could I stand up for all four quarters? And I'd get my halftime break to just sit down for like two minutes. But I, I, you know, my legs got stronger because of it. Matthew's mother won the most school spirited at her high school and inspired him to be LSU's number one fan. My mom is my everything, let's be honest. It's my mom's first game. Uh, yeah. Uh, she has always been my inspiration and my strength. I don't know where I would be without her. Uh, my son loved LSU, and uh, since I had an opportunity to come down and visit with him, it seemed like LSU loved him too. I felt way beyond embraced. Uh, the university as well as Baton Rouge as a whole. Matthew felt this embrace when people across the city and around campus knew him as the guy that goes to all the games. I think one of the best moments for me was I was in my normal clothes and I was sitting out, standing outside the union and this little boy comes up to me he's like, I know him, he's the guy with the wig. And for a little kid to recognize like just my face, was, it was a sign for me that I'm doing something right, that you know, this is what I was here to do. Almost every student athlete on campus knows exactly who Matthew Clark is. Um, just the fact that he's such a loyal fan, and not just to us, but to every single sport at LSU, it just shows his character and his passion. All right, y'all. One of them would see me later and was like, you had me cracking up yesterday. For now, Matthew is an LSU alumnus after graduating go, last May in mathematics. There's eventually going to come a time where I won't be able to hit every game. Matthew plans on applying to LSU grad school for his master's. And then, after that. Hopefully, Professor Clark somewhere down the line. For MassCom 3104, I'm John Christian Williams. Stick around because after the break, I'll fill you in on the team that is breaking all kinds of records. We will be right back. Welcome back to Sports Showtime. The LSU softball team returns home tonight after a month-long road trip spanning the country from Orlando to Palm Springs all the way to Starkville. As Sports Showtime reporter Johnny Lombardi explains, it was the pitching rotation that helped keep the Lady Tigers successful on the road. The LSU softball team is looking forward to some home cooking after a grueling month-long road trip. LSU's above-average pitching was the key to getting through the long road trip relatively unscathed. It has been, even when we weren't on the road, this month has been a grind. The pitching was there to bail out the offense once again as Rachel Fico led LSU to the 1-0 win with a school single game record 22 strikeouts in 14 shutout innings. The biggest story from the Tigers' out-of-state tournaments and their series against the Bulldogs was the marvelous pitching from Rachel Fico, Megan Patterson, and Ashley Chuckner. Chuckner, a transfer from Chattanooga State Community College where she won a junior college national championship last season, is adjusting well to life in SEC softball. Last year I could pretty much throw like, you know, any part of the, over the plate, like, you know, any zone, um, and people like really weren't going to hit it. And like this, you know, this first half of the season, I've definitely, you know, learned pretty quickly that you can't, you know, leave anything over the plate. Junior Megan Patterson is second in the LSU pitching rotation. It just shows you, like, what you need to work on, and um, going to the SEC, I think we'll start off fresh. LSU's ace, senior Rachel Fico, is a contender for the 2013 NCAA Softball Player of the Year Award. Fico's career at LSU has been decorated with wins along with awards, and in her senior season, she is not stepping off the pedal. We don't want to... Um, like start off well in the series and be happy with that. We want to be able to finish it and I think that's one thing that um, we've had a little bit of trouble with this year is we haven't had our best performances on Sundays. The pitching rotation will be the key to softball success in Baton Rouge this season and heading into SEC play, the Tigers have a pitching rotation to have confidence in. Johnny Lombardi, Tiger TV Sports. You can catch the LSU softball team in their first game back since February 17th tonight at Tiger Park against Nickel State. First pitch is set for 6.30. With seven new team records, two medals, and one SEC Freshman of the Year, this LSU team is really making a huge splash. I caught up with this high-flying crew to find out what makes them so great. The LSU diving team may not be the best-known sport on campus, but it's full of talent. A diver is an individual, a diver is a performer, a diver is a, an acrobatic athlete that likes to perform and uh, you know, they're really, it's just them. It's them in a Speedo. 
However, the Speedo alone doesn't make the diver. Head coach Doug Schaefer is known for having an eye for talent and scours the country for some of LSU's most gifted athletes. Probably one of my favorite coaches out there with a sense of humor, just a great guy. Uh, really good with his uh, corrections and really improved me as a diver as well. No one has had more of a profound impact on the LSU diving team than head coach Doug Schaefer. In his recent years here, he has produced 13 All-Americans, seven SEC Freshman of the Year, and two SEC Champions. His most recent Freshman Diver of the Year, Cassie Wheel, explains how much Coach Schaefer helped her along the way. When I would be stressed out, I guess, or like down, he said just to kind of go autopilot and do it like, you know how, like don't really think about it, and I think that helped me the most. Coach Schaefer leads his team to the zone diving NCAA regionals on March 11th. This is the meet that we train for all year long. This is our target. Um, we're ready for it, so we're going to go do our best job I can. We train all year for it, and it's an all or nothing to, to move forward. For Sports Showtime, I'm Taylor Halsey. Freshman diver Cassie Wheel snagged a third place finish and a spot for the upcoming NCAA championships. For more news on LSU swimming and diving, keep it tuned to Sports Showtime. Don't go anywhere, the OT will be right back. Well, that's all the time we have for you today. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest news at TTV underscore sports. We'll have exclusive web content coming at you at TigerTV.tv.